their message have entitled The Embrace of Christmas. The Embrace of Christmas. How do we embrace Christmas? Christmas is about Christ. But how do we embrace this season? It's a season some of us have gone home, a reason why our children need to be here. Some of our teachers have already traveled. You know, they teach. And we celebrate many things. But how do we embrace Christmas? Um, there is a story of uh, my wife keeps telling me about the lions. The male lions, I don't know whether the lions actually are male, the lioness, which is the female. I know some of us don't know the difference, or like me. The lioness is female, the lion is the male. The lions actually eat their male cubs when they are born. Reason is because they know that when they grow up, they will take over their territory. So they fight and do something in that. And in this particular embrace, I'll be mentioning too, that there is a fake embrace and there is a true embrace. There are true people that will hold to Christ and say, in the celebration, Christ is the answer. He is Emmanuel with us. And there are those that will go there with the self motives. But allow us to read the book of Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12 where we are going to draw some two lessons and then we are going to have a Christmas rendition and we bring this service to an end. Matthew chapter 2 records a story of the Magi or what we say, the wise men seeking Jesus. And the Bible says that after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea and during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw this star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. You need to pay attention that this come to worship and another one is disturbed. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where is Christ? Okay, where is the Christ was to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people, Israel. And then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I, may, I, I too may go and worship him. So he's also seeking to worship him. There is an embrace that he's seeking. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his, with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, you know Herod had sent them, not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. May the Lord bless his word. Now, there are only two people here that I want to make reference in terms of character. The Magi, who are the wise and the herald, who is the king that was ruling. And you know, King is, Isaiah had prophesied that Jesus would come. So this was not going to be something like a mystery to the whole people. Like as many of us know that we are living in a dispensation awaiting the return of Jesus Christ. So when he was born, the all glamour and many things as many people were doing was able to put something in Herod's heart. And Herod was... I'll be looking at his characteristics, says, I also want to go and worship him. He speaks very nice words. In fact, they think that he was also going to worship Jesus. 
Say, go and do a careful search. In fact, his tone, if you read, does not suggest was a man that would go in another place, as you read, and say, let all the boy child be destroyed. He has a fake embrace of Christ. So there are two kinds of embrace, embrace in this place. The embrace by Herod, and there is the embrace by the, mag the Magi. When we go before God in this season, we have so many Magi. You've gone to the supermarket. I'm not saying supermarket are Magi. If you have a supermarket, please forgive me. But they can be a fake celebration of Christ because Christmas is about Christ. And there could be also that embrace by Herod, which also depicts a hypocrisy or a way of just having what we call jealousy. But there is that of Magi. But they the Magi, as they are called the wise men. They are not just wise that they knew the law per se. In fact, they were astrologers. So they are a people who may not be closer to God in the reality, but by virtue of their hearts, they will really depict the true meaning of Christmas. Buana's first son. The Magi, in every sense, as they are called the wise men, I was very careful in my notes. They were not so holy like we would call the Levites. They were astrologers, actually. They were using astrology to follow Jesus. But when they find Jesus, they bow down and worship him. So they are not far from Herod. They were using the star to go and seek for Jesus. But they did what we call the right embrace. That you could sit and read the word of God and maybe not do the right and true thing. But when you get closer to him, you will say, this is Jesus. Well, by divine nature, God was revealing himself to man. And so the Magi had no choice other than to do what God had asked them to do. But in every sense, in any sense, the Magi could have not even qualified to that particular stand of the Levites of greatness. But they do something that I want us to look at and learn from them. They worship Jesus. While Herod is seeking to finish and destroy the child that is born. Embrace by Herod. The embrace by Herod. Herod was actually a big man. If I am a big man, I think I should not fear anything. One of the things we say to our elders here, they should make decisions without fear or favor. Because they don't pay you. Another thing, when you are boss at a certain place, you should not fear. King Herod was the king. So why is he fearing that the king has been born? <laughs> he has not been inaugurated. One as well, son. You are the king. You are the CEO. And an entrance of a young man in your office threatens you to that level. It really shocks me. He was born, actually, I will be from the, the priesthood. You know, this man was born from the lineage of dynasties. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Herod actually wanted to kill the child Jesus. If you read from verse 13 to 18, which I have not read, who he saw a potential threat to his throne. There are many Herods who would claim to celebrate Christmas. And also your achievement could be, be careful what you report to them. May the Lord reveal to you to be like the Magi and take the other route. Praise the Lord. There are people who would go to celebrate even Christmas. Be careful which route you take, my elder Maleche back home. Otherwise, Herod will send a careful search and he say, go and do a careful search. I've also made some chapati. I know you love chapati like you and me. Gooked chapati, the brown one that has no black spot and they are served well with some stew, with some waru. Some of us love that. He will say, I've also prepared some. Come all together. I also want to worship and give thanks to God. Be careful what you report to Herod, his embrace during Christmas is not right. Our children who are in the service today, they are men and women, and even some of your friends that will deceive you to go for parties that look nice, that look even some decoration that look like Christmas and with a Christmas tree. But in the end, there will be no godliness there. Be careful what you report to them. Some of them will be after your money that your parents have made. The current marketing, strategy of the devil is to seek every way to get to some of us who are parents through our children. 
And so they are brought to the place of where people are just befriending them to get access to your gate. Be careful and teach them. Children, we told you in our Sunday school, I told the Hopes class, if somebody tells you something and tells you, do not go and tell anyone. The interpretation of that from the embrace of Jesus is go and tell everybody. Amen. Children, I'm talking about children, adults, after was a man, they will keep. I'm talking to my children. That they tell you, no, that one, don't go and tell anyone. What I tell them in Sunday school, go and tell everyone about that. That is a wrong thing you are doing, and somebody is recruiting me, recruiting you to, to be a partner in crime. And Herod was seeking to do that to the Magi. What were the characteristics of the Herod? Where we read, he loved opulence. He was from the lineage of Herodian dynasty. He was a descendant of Edomites, an offspring of Esau. You know Esau had a lot of animals and many things, and you can read about that. This was a proud man, but a proud man that does not want even anything that even God has ordained to grow under. It was a fake thing that we must learn and resist you can actually exhibit heroic tendencies. That is my message to you. May you understand that when God sent his begotten son to come in a lowly state, as Christ the child, was humility. Praise the Lord. The Muslims actually argue and say, why would God want to send a king, yet he's a baby? God was bringing Christ the deliverer an opposite of the ruling king who was proud. He came a humble child that was born that elicited even jealousy from this man. So he was jealousy. Hearing that the king is born, he's seeking to destroy that child. He was ruthless and cunning. You know, children are innocent. I watch animal channels many times. Even a lion, when it gets a small gazelle, it doesn't eat. But here is Herod, who wants to destroy an innocent child, and many people are trying to do that in the merchandise of the Christmas, that people are selling uh, beer to underage children. That is being ruthless. There is no better word. Born as if you were son. This is an embrace that seems to be you are good. You are talking cunningly and more sweetly, bringing children of people, and yet you are misleading them. Herod was that. If a lion that loves meat, even is angry, I looked at many times. It is just cuddles with the, the small gazelle until the mother comes. It can eat the mother. But not the baby. Herod, different, looked like a hyena that would really finish people. He was ruthless, I can dare tell you. He didn't love Jesus. This man, he didn't love Jesus. Neither did he love the message of the cross. He knew he was the king. For many of us, when we were getting born again, we used to be told you are sitting on a throne, on a certain seat. Now, when you get born again, allow Christ to sit on this seat. I look forward to when many of us will still decorate that Christ is the Lord of this house. We used to have those pictorial um, that we would put in our house. Now, in Herod's embrace, in house, he was the king. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He's embraced that there was no other that was going to thrive. That was Herod for you. He didn't love him. He knew he was the big man, and he would remain to be big. And he was cunning to seek for him. Imagine you are king, and when suddenly there is a commotion in your kingdom. This is what is happening because of a group of wise men are running far away land and come searching for a king. Now it would be a good thing if you were the king. They would have come looking for you. But you are not. Apparently there is a newborn king that will take over the kingdom. And you know nothing about that. Okay? So, your question here why actually Herod is trying to depict these things is that because two kings cannot reign at the same time. Amen? Praise the Lord. In this Christmas we cannot have two kings. Let me tell you. Herod is right. He should have accepted Christ to reign. Or else, he reigns. So he was right. But then, he was wrong. 
There was a greater king that Isaiah has said that he's coming to save the world. He would have just subjected and say, I will be under your lordship. Praise the Lord. Sikuwa nyumba tu kuna kuwa na baba moja. Na mama moja. Amen. The king was to be one. And so Herod is right. But now, he should ask, how come this is a young king? Is come? What can I do? He did not embrace the king. So he pretended to embrace the king, but he did not embrace the king. So in Christmas, we have people who will sing this season, we will finish, and that will be the end. But then, there is the second way that we will be looking at. So let's not fall um, in dilemma of this. Let's pray that God will help us to acknowledge the Lord. There are many kings in our lives, and these I've already mentioned, a pride, a worship of self, idolism, yeah, being able to worship of others, worship of things. But Christmas is about embracing Christ. There are many emotions that are happening when we celebrate like this, but God is inviting us that we embrace him. Let's avoid this fake embrace. For some of us, even if you lack what to eat, thank God. Amen. If you have something to eat, thank God. Let Christ be there, and then that will be a blessing to you. What about the embrace by the wise men? These wise men, as I told you, were astrologers. <laughs> but thank God, God was using them, that they would be able to do what God asked them. They were obedient. One of the characteristics of the wise men, they were obedient. The Bible says from verse 9 to verse 12 and verse 12, they followed the star. I want to pray that we will follow God in this season. We will not jump and do many things that are not Christ-like. During this Christmas is when we circumcise our children. And many of us mix many things. One of us were biblical scholars, we say, syncretism, you are mixing, nuna changanya changanya, hapa na pale, unapereka hapa na pale, babua mweke mkono, ya unaita pasta na weka mkono. Sasa ni mkono gani nasikika? Praise the Lord. Many of us will give out our, we mix many things. Pray that next year by God's grace, God will help us also to demystify some of the things we do in the name of tradition. God had given a sign, and the Bible says, and when the star went ahead, the wise men followed it. They were obedient to the latter. I know many of us would turn back and say, let me go back, and then go to where I want to go. So you get where you want to go Let The wise men follow the star. Our star during Christmas is the word of God. God is revealed through his word. It's revealed through his son. He should be proclaimed over every meal, over every person, over every occasion, in the name of Jesus, we have mixed many things, and we have made ourselves and think that it is right to do that. I want to tell you that if indeed you are embracing Christ to be the Lord of you, choose the path of Jesus. Don't be corrupt. I was arrested on Friday, or was it the Thursday, when I was going to Nigeria prison. Um, I packed my car and I was quick running to the bank. I paid two minutes late. So when I came back 15 minutes after, my car was clamped. Then, uh, well, I look at the receipt of the warrant, says 8.40, but uh, I paid for, at 8.40 I was not in town, you know. So I was convinced even if 1100 is a quick money to pay, I will not pay. One, I just paid it, I stepped from the car, paid and then called Reverend Patrick. So it is a two different. So if they argued me a two different, that would be able to say it. No one is coming to check that my car is clamped. They go to, the, go to that place. I said, I will not. We delayed to get to Hungaria. Story cut short. I asked them at 8.40, actually I called somebody before I go to town at 8.40. 8.40 I was at Shell on Uganda Road. So I asked them, how did you climb my car when it was moving? Uh, they could not answer, but those guys are very smart. Because I moved out of my car very fast, they knew I had not paid. And uh, they just did that. Let's not be able to be disobedient. Some of us have lost jobs. We are getting to the new year. Be obedient to the latter. You may lack something to eat, but do not get the shortcut. The white men embracing Christmas, the man, obedience. 
obedience. This is one of the things that is struggling. I can't say that I had not done a mistake on that particular occasion, but I had actually, I was not in town at 8.40 when the car was clamped. That is the truth of the matter. Sorry. The wise men were very alert, were very alert. Verse 1 says, then Jesus was, no, no, verse 1 says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. They came. How alert are we in the things of, how sensitive are we to the provocation to the spirit of God? During this Christmas for you to embrace, seek and see them people. Thank God, by the way, we really appreciate you. The Christmas we are giving is not us. Some of you out of our call of bread basket have gone a long way to really boost our kit. In fact, somebody bought goods worth 49000 and brought the receipt and said, Pastor, this is for Christmas. And we thank God. appreciate you, sir. You need to be alert to the leading of the Spirit of God. Sometimes we get blinded. Some things that works around. One of the things that blinded Herod was power. He was in power. And he knew he would be in power. And that is wrong. Even me, I will not be here forever. My head has been a joy. Praise the Lord. So you should not enter me into things. I should be alert to the leading of spirit. When my time will come, I exit honorably. And the, the one will just make the announcement. And it will be done. Praise the Lord. I need to be alert when my time is up. Amen. One of my mentors. <laughs> was praying that one day that when he is a senior pastor, he will shake the president's hand in the church. So when the president came and he shaked his hand, he said, my time is up. <laughs> He's coming here next year. I'm not saying anything. Um, but truth be said, had lived a few months after that, he exited and said, oh, God, you hear what I say. Be alert. Read the signs of the times, praise the Lord. That when it's time for us to be able to see the need, you respond. When for you is the time to change the gear, change the gear. When God wants you to sit down, sit down. When God wants you to stand, stand. The wise men were alert. And this is calling us a lot in the Bible talks about to be watchful. How sharp our ears for us to depict and read the times where we are. How prayerful are we? Because if the astrologers were just, Jesus was born and they were able to go. And they were alert. Have you ever received a call when you are in need? You see, that person prays for me. He's a closer friend than a brother. He's able to be alert to know that I'm in need. Or he could be arrested. You know, I was arrested and Reverend Patrick came quickly. So he's alert. Anyway, we were going with him and I was not, I had called him last and I'm not receiving the call. So the officers so there are the many vehicles. And then uh, they say, he's coming, he's coming, wait. I say, tell me, uh, at 8 foot, who climbed this vehicle? I say, wait, we are coming. And we are there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you are alert, God will sort your issues. I dare tell you. Many of us, the day you lose job, another door will open. Because God, in his embrace through Christ, is timely. By the way, this man became alert. Look at after they have finished their assignment, the voice of God speaks to them and says, do not go to Jerusalem from the same route you came from. God is speaking to them. Their ears are sharp to listen to the voice of God and they are led to where they want to go. They were keen, verse 9. Should be able to say, alert and keen. They were keen. Are we observant and sensitive to the things of God? Actually, the other say, word is sensitive. They are sensitive. They are, they are sensitive to what God is leading them every day. This is the season to lead some of our people to Christ. I've made all occasions, including the birthdays of my son, to be a place we preach the gospel. Yesterday, people wasted my time. We went to that place, and people talked, talked. The word of God was preached when people had gone. Be sensitive. The ACK are doing very well in Findros. Very sensitive. Now, they are saying because when the politician will speak and leave, other people will go. So the word comes before politicians speak. You get it? This is the thing I'm talking about. Some of us can be sensitive like the wise man to the leading of the Spirit. We can use this occasion to speak the word of God. For people who do not know what Christmas is all about, you tell them it's about Christ. 
These wise men were sensitive to that. They were reverent. They were reverent. They were reverent if they give, they revered God. Because this was the Son of God that came to save us. And so, the Bible says in verse 11b, and when they found the child with the mother, they bowed down and worshipped him. What do you do when you find Christ? Do you just get the selfies and say, I was in charge today? Or you would go and bow before God. How reverent are we in this Christmas? We are going to have delicacies. Do we pray and give thanks for the provision? During the time God has delivered you from many things, will you give thanks and be reverent for that? Or will you remain to be political like Herodic and the Herodic tendencies? The wise men were wise to the extent that they bowed down and worshipped the child and worshipped Christ. Do we do that? Christmas is about us worshipping God, not any other thing. Others is just a mere day that many of you will get holiday and families be able to gather and then you ask, oh, how has been your job? How has been this? Ask them, have you been able to walk with God? Praise the Lord. And they were sacrificial, like our Thanksgiving day that we have here. The wise men were not blinded when God led them. And the Bible says, and they opened their backs and they were able to give the offerings of gold, the incense of myrrh and all those that they were able to give. They were sacrificial. We do not know how much that was but in Christmas, it's about sacrifice. Praise the Lord. For many of us who never go home, I want to challenge you. During Christmas, check even some of our, our babies. I was meeting one of my friends the other day. Speak to just somebody. And uh, the person is looking for school fees and they say, I'm taking by faith and I will take you to school. That is the sacrificial mind of Christ that some of us need to do. When many of us are doing well, some of our closest people who are relatives, they are languishing, they are not going to school. I want to dare tell you, let's not be Christians of individualism, that you only extend to those that maybe you work with. Be sacrificial and understand what God is leading you to. The wise men were able to worship God. Through our sacrifice of worship, we depict our worship to God. Amen. When you see somebody who is hungry, Actually, the other day I was just making my way from home and somebody says, stop, stop. And he greets me. And then he says, I have no soap. Then I asked myself, I wanted to ask him, do you know me? <laughs> but you know, he stopped me honorably. So I just opened my kibeti and give him something. Anyway, after it was not enough, he said, can I send you a person? He does not have a phone. He said, send to the till. And I said, you know me? He said, no, I just felt like I should stop Praise the Lord. There are those kind of people that will come your way. Be willing to help. Be sacrificial. It is a way to do good to others. Those who are the wise men. There are many things we can look about the wise men. But I would pray that we be wise men. Alert, sensitive, able to obey God, and be able to be reverent to God. To God. Not just to Herod. I may depict the Herodic tendencies, maybe as a leader. But God wants you to be reverent. And they just kept quiet. There is no commotion in the conversation between Herod and the Magi. They just go and do what is right. And the rest is history to make this Christmas to be a Christmas to be celebrated. What embrace will lead to? When you embrace or when you be like the Magi and embrace Christmas or embrace Christ the right way, you'll be able to know that obedience leads to the voice of God. You will be able to hear God. Many of us are blurry. God is taking you far. You need to hear him well. It is not the end. Praise the Lord. In this Christmas, I pray that we obey God where he leads us. It is a journey of faith that we do exploits. Amen. Next year, actually, our theme is just to be in his presence. Our banner is just coming, in his presence. We just want to be in God and see what God can do. In fact, our requests and needs will be little. When you want to thrive at the feet of Jesus like Mary did, when Mary was running here and there, we will hear him well, and our needs will be met. This is what they did. Another thing is study the way. Study the way. 
when you embrace, you must know the way that leads. Christ is Lord. Amen. And Herod knew that. He did not doubt. He only knew that he's going to take his seat. <laughs> Study the way. Study the way. And they went with the star. Embrace this. Communion with Christ. That worship I want to believe is a communion of prayer. You will be able to pray. You will commune with God. Don't celebrate this Christmas away from prayer. Amen. I've ever fasted once in my life during Christmas. Once. And it was a compulsory. You know, there are <laughs> uh, my hopes. No. We went for a mission and the mission coordinator said, anyway, we, the schools did. For many of you who are in campus, sometimes school don't. They can close one day to, to Christmas. And we said we are going for, for the mission. So when we arrived there, the prayer coordinator and the mission coordinator said, Today we are fasting. It was 25th. It is one day that I fast. The rest I've eaten. I'm confessing my sins. But let me tell you, it does wonders. That even on that day, if you not feast, you can fast. Amen. You can fast. These people found Jesus and they prayed. It is actually more important for you to have a fast rather than a feast, a feast on the, the day we are having Christmas. I know some of you prefer the feast. And you say, we did not eat anything. Where we come from, in fact, if you eat gideri, you did not eat anything. If you eat meat, you did not eat anything. You know what we must eat. But I'm also asking you, eat prayer. You will commune with Christ. And your Christmas will be complete. The likeness, desire, the desire, the drive. When you embrace Christ, you desire to be him, like him. You desire. Why would if people open their, their, their bibeti and give God the best? They wanted to be like him. They wanted him to be able to exude his blessing to them. Amen. I was telling my people in counseling, I want to see you when people are crying. You embrace them. For some of you, if you embrace by people you love, kuna kuwa na hiyo electromagnetic transfer or blessing. Amen. Mutu wa kukuhagu vizura na kupendo kutoka hapa unafurai. Those are some few things we need. When we hug and embrace Christ, you feel like he's with you. And he's with you, by the way. Praise the Lord. Many of us are way in stress because we have not embraced this Christ. The desire to be with him is an embrace. Amen. Some of us were married I dare tell you, it's just a time they can embrace your spouse and pray and say, let's be like Christ, even if things go wrong. There is an electromagnetic transfer that you see. The wise men we read about, I'm telling you, they were astrologers. <laughs> but now you see they are setting a precedent of us how to worship, how to be obedient, how they saved. Anyway, they didn't save God, they had known that the son would be okay, even if they were that. When you actually embrace Christ, you learn to Give gifts, offers. Giving is one of the difficult attributes of many people. And it's not on the ability. It is because people are jealous. They are jealous. You would imagine a church like Sitam, why should they collect offering? You know, some people, I'm just saying, people ask us those questions. But this is a king. Why would a king actually receive gifts? Christ does not deserve gifts for, for any sense. He is the gift. Praise the Lord. He does not. They open and they put there. It was a worship. The embrace. Some of us, and I take this as an extrapolation. Even in love, when you are dating people, learn to give some priceless gifts. Praise the Lord. Or your wife is the one working and you are not. Get something and give them. They will appreciate it. John Maxwell, in his book and many of his seminars, he says, everyone is craving for love. Everyone. Even those you think, even the president. So I, used, I was around his home. I was with the mother during the... They have said he has not come home. <laughs> Work must be too much. I won't dare tell you. He also needs an affirmation. He needs your prayers. He needs your encouragement. I also need the same. My elders and deacons need the same. Your wife, your spouse, your child, they need that. Some of them are just gifts of mouth. Many of us are grating 
old and old and you say, ah, hizo tukua tunasema tukio wasta. The king was born and the gifts were offered. What does that depict to us? When we embrace Christ, we learn to give him the praise. In prayer, we adore him. I love these people when they were leading praise and I was, wow, God, you are here. I feel good. I don't know how much that piece to the other end. I hosted my mother's the other time. When they came, one of them said, don't send me fair. And so she came. And then she came. She blessed me until I blessed her. So we were all confused in blessings. And I realized, wow, when you bless, even that who is greater, he blesses, it looks like a competition. Amen. And the greater gets the glory. God is our greater God. Anytime we offer praise to him, he is able to extend much to us. He's able to check the attitude. Because I realized my aunt was refusing everything that I was giving. So I had to look my way because I said, I called you here because I want to do something to you. She sang in my house. I've taken a video that I would be looking every day and say, wow. Wow, this is nice. I think God can do that to us. When he looks into us, he sees a son and a daughter that is given fully to him. That the wise man depicts that. The Bible says they went to tell others that the child was wrapped in a manger and they have found him. When we embrace Christ, we proclaim Christ. Christ is not meant to be kept in the boardroom and bedroom. Praise the Lord. One as the few. For many of us, we keep Christ too close to our heart that is no longer anywhere. We only do enrich in our hearts. God is asking that we do outreach in this Christmas. Proclaim him. I was told by a friend of mine that when you see a Hindu with uh, something on the top of their head, it means they prayed. They are proclaiming that they prayed. I don't know what we use as Christian as a sign that we prayed or we are of Christ. Our fellow ministry churches have at least a collar and um, uh, a cross. I saw one of, one of my brother in another church. looks a little bit heavy because closer to about 300 uh, uh, grams. Because it's a little bit heavy. So if you put some 200 here, attempt one day, you dare tell me how it looks and tastes like. But do we proclaim Christ even without the cross of wearing? Do we proclaim Christ in the functions that we do? When we impress Christ during this season, we will proclaim Christ. We will tell others, we have found him. Now he's no longer in the manger. He leaves. Today is just a commemoration of who Christ is. And I want us to go and tell others, he is born in our hearts. He is with us. And that will call to your attitudes, to your works, to everything that you do. And God will bless you. I want to actually bring this to an end and say, to embrace Emmanuel, Emmanuel, we must be sincere. We must activate heroic tendencies of sitting on the throne and thinking we will lead forever. We must release our ego, unhealthy competition, and get ready to worship God. We need to be alert. We need to be sensitive. We need to lean more to his word and the word that was spoken before and pray and God will be with us, and he will lead us. This Christmas will be full of blessing. I'm telling you, I remember one time that at Christmas I fasted. But it looks like one of my best Christmases, because we fasted, and then we also preached Christ. Amen. Those could be some few things even the mission team should be thinking. But now, as a faith pastor, I would discourage you, because it's also the same time that some of our spouses, when they are far away, they are home. But we can actually go on a mission to preach on a Christmas and embrace Christ. May we deactivate the heroic tendencies. I want to pray for us before everyone. Party come to bring this service to an end. Just bow your head down where you are. I make a prayer for you. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. Indeed, it's a Christmas. And Lord, I pray that this will not just be a time when we are going to smell the sweet aroma from the kitchen, but Lord, the sweet aroma from your word, that we may proclaim you. We may hear, Lord, the word you're speaking to our ears. 
the attention you would want us to do and extend to those that do not know you in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, O oh God. May you come in our hearts that we may celebrate you. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. 